we need to find the surface area of this shape that we have over here. It's called the frustum of a cone. I mean, I like to just call it a bucket or, or a tumbler because that's, that's the shape really. Large circle, small circle connected this way. Now I have some lens with me and I particularly care about this surface area. What we call the curved surface area because I know that I can always add the area of that circle and the area of this circle if I need it. So my specific question is what is this curved surface area? How do I, how do, I do this? The key idea is I look at this and go, I can imagine this to be made up of two cones, a large cone from which a smaller cone has been removed because I know the formula for the curve surface area of a cone. It's pi into r into the slant height, pi rl. So because I know that, I can just find the curve surface area of this big cone, subtract the curve surface area of this small cone and I'll have the curve surface area of this. Now, that's, that's the strategy, but there are some lengths missing. To do that, I need to find this length. I don't have that length directly given to me. I also need to find the length of this smaller cone. That's also not given to me. So I need to use what's given to first find those, and then I can just use it. So now's a good time to uh, just stop if you feel like it, and uh, try and find these lengths on your own, and then use them in the formula, pi rl, and see what answer you get. So I'm just first going to label, first label this so that I can like, I can start talking about these things. So uh, I know that I want L2 to find the curve surface area of the big cone and L1 to find the curve surface area of the small cone. But to do that, I want to find H1 and H2 because uh, once I have them, if I have H1, I can use Pythagoras theorem to do 6 and H1. I can use those two to find L1 and similar story for finding L2 as well. So my first step then is to find h1. And how do I find h1? I make an observation that this triangle over here and this triangle over here are similar, which means their sides will be proportional. So I'm going to write the sides that are proportional. So h1 is this side. This bigger side is what we call h2, but looking at the geometry here, I know that's h1 plus 4. So h1 plus 4. That's the this side by this side, and that should be proportional to 6 by 9. 6 by 9. Now we have one equation, one variable. This is solvable. So let's do that. So I'm going to cross multiply 9 into h1. 9 into h1 equals 6 into h1. 6 into h1 plus 6 into 4. That's 24. 24. Now, uh, I know this is 3h1, this is 24 on this side, so 24 by 3 is 8. So I have my h1, h1 equals 8 centimeters. I know I did a little bit of math mentally over here. Uh, you can totally verify it if you want to just slow down. 3h1 here, 24 over here. But now that I have h1, this is 8, I can find this total length. That's 8 plus 4, so h2 equals 12 centimeters. 12 centimeters. I've already made a lot of progress, right? After this, I only need Pythagoras theorem. So let's do that to find L1 and L2. So let's find L1 first. Uh, L1. L1 will be uh, root of 6 squared plus h1 squared. Root over 6 squared plus um, h1 squared, which is 8 squared. Uh, which is, uh, okay, I'm just going to write 8 squared. And I know this is equal to 36 plus 64. 36 plus 64 root over. And that is equal to 60 plus 30 is 90. 6 plus 4 is 10. Root of 100, which is 10. So L1 equals 10 centimeters. So uh, the actual numbers need not be beautiful Pythagorean triplets like this, okay? So that you get a final answer that looks like this pretty. This might as well have been some non-perfect square. The answer will look ugly. The reason I've picked numbers like this is the point of this video is not to test whether you can find the square root of a number. It's to understand how to find the curves of this area of a frustum. So the numbers being, there could be some other question where the numbers don't look as pretty as this. So don't don't like, don't like think that you're wrong. You're, you're doing the right thing. So L2 equals, similar story, root over H2 squared, which is uh, 12 squared, plus R2 squared, which is 9 squared. 
and that's equal to 12 square is 144 9 square is 81 the whole thing is equal to root over 225 let's put a root over here root over 225 and that's 15 so we know that l2 equals 15 centimeters so you have all the lengths that you need and notice that you haven't used any specific frustum formula I find this method that we're doing much more intuitive. So now you have to just subtract the curve surface area of the larger cone. Take, take that and then do that minus the curve surface area of the smaller cone. What's the curve surface area of this larger cone? That's going to be equal to, let's draw a line over here. That's going to be equal to pi r2 l2. I'm saying r2 for this 9 minus pi r1 l1 pi r1 l1 that's going to give me this region right so that's what i want so let's do this so i'm going to take pi as 22 over 7 and take it out common so 22 over 7 that comes out so i have r2 l2 minus r1 l1 r2 is 9 centimeters 9 into l2 which we spent a lot of time finding is 15 minus r1 l1 r1 6 and L1 is, where did we find it? It's over here, 10 centimeters. And that's it. Uh, depending on the numbers actually given, this could look more complicated, but luckily we over here we have, uh, actually not luckily, I picked the numbers like that. We don't have something that looks too bad. So 9 into 15 is 90 plus 35, 90 plus 45, sorry, it's 135. Minus 6 into 10 is 60. So overall, over here, you have 22 over 7. Maybe I should use the same color. 22, 22 over 7 multiplied by 75. You can go ahead and find this answer. I really uh, don't think that's the point here. So uh, you can find this answer. It's going to be 220 something because this is approximately 10, like 11 approximately. So 11 into 220. So it's going to be, answer is going to be somewhere there. And the unit's going to be centimeters square. But the key idea here is that you can look at the frustum, take the bigger cone, find the lengths of the bigger cone and the smaller cone so that you can go ahead and use curve surface area formula.